Hey there and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a hopefully exciting new video. This time we'll talk about background services in ASP.NET Core. Yeah, this is a topic that is actually very, very interesting because when you are developing or working on real applications, you are very often in scenarios where you actually need to run some background tasks at a certain point. For instance, in the last few weeks on the projects that I worked on, we had to implement some background tasks, tasks that make some database cleanups, or for instance, uh, we had to set the statuses of some requests based on the date and, and things like that. And we had to do that at certain hours probably, and most probably during the night. So the idea is that, of course, we needed a background task, a, a, break, a background job for that. Now, of course, my personal preference goes always towards the cloud. And I would use, of course, either uh, Azure functions, or if not possible, maybe if I have deployed the app in, uh, in an Azure web app, I would like to use a web job for that. However, there are times where we have also constraints and we cannot always use the exact technologies that we might want. So in our case, the constraint was that we had to use background tasks that were executed actually and triggered by our own code. So in our own code base, uh, in our application, not, not using any other, I would say maybe uh, uh, third party services for that. So this is a quite regular scenario basically. And that's why I think it's very, very important to discuss a little bit this concept of background services in ASP.NET Core. So let's get right started with it and switch to Visual Studio. I have prepared for this video already a very small project, which, which is kind of like a little bit the weather forecast API that we have as a standard template. However, with the only difference that I have moved most, most of the logic of generating weather forecasts in a weather forecast service. So out of the controller, like it is usually in the template. What I have in this weather forecast service is actually, well, we have just two properties. Uh, one, which is the forecast, which contains a list of uh, forecasts. And then we have the current weather, which assumably could be like the weather today, for instance. And when we create a new instance of this service, what it happens is we randomly generate actually new uh, forecasts, five new forecasts. And then for the current weather, we just take the first one from the forecast. So it's not something very, very complicated. And uh, everything seems to work fine. We can even run this application. And let's see, I guess it runs on the other screen, but I'll bring it here. As it is an ASP.NET Core a Web API project, we already have also Swagger in it. So we can just try it out. And if we execute, we see that here we get the list of forecasts. And if we get here and execute the other one, let's go and try out and then execute. And then we should see here the result, which is actually corresponding to the first forecast uh, here in, uh, it's actually not corresponding. Ah, uh, that's a little bit strange. Uh, it's zero in this case. Yeah, whatever. This is uh, not really important in, in, in this case right now. So, the idea is that what we actually need to do here is, okay, we want to have a um, background service or maybe two background services that actually update this, uh, this forecast. Now, the reason behind this, if we would have a real weather application, probably, probably we take our data from some, some third party APIs or, or products or services that provide us with this type of information. So, of course, that at certain or at regular intervals, we might want to, to run a background service to, to take the new information and actually update the forecast information that we display. So this is the scenario that we want to implement. So uh, let's get uh, started and uh, let's see how we can do that. Now, when it comes to background services in ASP.NET Core, they are supported natively. So it's actually very easy to run such background services in ASP.NET Core. And there are actually two different ways in which you could do that. One, by implementing simply an interface in, uh, in your service that you want to run as a background service. And the other one, of course, is to use an abstract class, which is also called background service. The interface, by the way, is called iHosted service. Now, 
the abstract class actually implements the interface already so we'll see the difference between them and uh, scenarios in which we might want to choose the one uh, on the other so let's get started and uh, let's implement first uh, a service that would update the current weather so let's get here uh, started and in the services folder let's add, add here a new class and we will call this class current uh, weather service so in this service we choose first to implement the idea of a background service using actually the i hosted interface so it is i hosted service so of course we have to implement or add the using for microsoft extension hosting and we'll explain uh, in a moment why this is part of uh, the hosting now let's kind of uh, set up a little bit this uh, this uh, this whole thing and what we would need here we will need a timer and we'll see exactly why we need that um, just in a second let's call it timer and then uh of course we need to use the using also for that for this one and then we will need also a private read only i weather forecast service because this is or the properties of this service is what we actually uh, want to let's call this forecast service this is actually what we want to update in our background job now, of course, we need here also a constructor, and in this constructor, we'll also have, uh, we don't need a timer, we will see exactly why and where we will uh, use the timer, but we will definitely need an iWeather forecast service, and let's call it forecast service, and assign it to the field equals forecast service, and that should be it for the constructor. Now it comes it comes actually to the implementation of the high hosted service interface. Now, if we uh, go here on this interface, we can go on implement interface, and it actually already shows us what we need to implement. So we have here two methods that we would need uh, to to implement: the start async method and the stop async method. And besides this method, we will actually need our method that will do the actual work so do the uh, do the update itself so let's make this public void update current weather and uh, this will take an object state and we'll see exactly what this means just in a second but right now let's just implement here the logic for this so uh, let's simply like take the forecast service current and then let's um from from the current weather let's uh let's set the date the date time now and uh also let's set the temperature temperature in celsius and we'll just increment it plus equals one and that should do it so that's all the logic that we want to, to to implement here but remember this is actually the method where we perform the actual work so the work that our background service actually needs to to perform now let's go back to these two methods that we have here the start async method and the stop async method now here is actually asset where all the wiring happens with uh, what asp.net core provides us so what we would need here is very uh, simple to start a new uh, timed background service. We need to create a timer for that. And that's why we have that private field timer that we have uh, created. And this, uh, we can initialize here a new timer. And that should do it. And right now, what we would have to do is uh, well, in the timer, we have to provide different type of information, and this is actually how we define 
uh, how our background service will work. So the first thing that we have to provide here to the timer is actually the callback or the method that needs to be executed at regular timed intervals that we will specify further. So what we will do here, we'll use this method, we'll specify this update current weather method uh, to see exactly, okay, uh, what, uh, what we actually need. Then we would need to provide an object or a type object that would kind of like a hold the state for, for, for the entire stuff. And here, for instance, right now we will pass null, but this is actually the place uh, where you would, if you have something like a field where you want to store some state about or after each service uh, executes and then pass it to the next execution, this is here the place where you could do that. So here you can actually pass in any type of object that contains some state that you might rely on when you execute uh, uh, this task. And actually this state object that you would provide here is actually the incoming parameter for this method. So it's actually very easy because here where you actually do the work, you can access this state object and use the information that you have there to perform whatever things you need to perform based on that specific state object. Now, the next thing that we would have to specify is exactly when do we want our service to run for the first time. Uh, and here we can say time span zero, but you can provide any time span. And this is actually or uh, doing by doing this or setting this uh, in other way than with zero will delay uh, when this task will be executed or when this job will be executed the first time after the application starts. So when we have time span zero, it means that it will actually be executed for the first time right when the application starts. And uh, uh, I will discuss exactly uh, also when that happens. Now, after this, there is one other thing that we need to specify. And here we can specify a time span. And here we can, for instance, say from minutes, and I want uh, to run this every minute. And that's basically it. Then what we can do is just uh, return a task dot completed uh, task. And that's it. Now in the stop async method, of course, we would have to, to specify some, some, some logic that would be actually triggered when the uh, this background service stops. Let's first implement, so we check if the timer is not null, uh, then we just want to change it. Actually, what we do is actually stop the timer. And uh, then this we can do this by setting a timeout, uh, timeout to uh, infinite. But I'm doing a lot of typos here, sorry for that. So timeout infinite. And uh, then also provide uh, zero as the period. So this will make our timeout actually uh, to be, to take actually forever. And then we can also return task.completed task. And that should be it. Now, let's have the discussion on when these two methods are triggered, because this is a very important thing. Now, the idea is that as said, this being a background service is actually managed by the host. So the host where your application actually runs. And we have a video uh, that where we have discussed the startup sequences of an ASP.NET Core application. And then we looked at the program.cs file and uh, we talked also about the host, how the host is configured, what different type of host we have and things like that. But for that, we have a separate video. So if you want, or if you're not familiar with that and, and want to, to check that out or maybe just refresh your information, uh, you will find the link in the description below this video or probably there's also a card here somewhere with the link to the video. So uh, just feel free to click on that and watch that video on how hosts are configured. However, the idea is that when the startup process uh, of the host kicks in, the start async method is called actually or invoked before the request pipeline, uh, uh, pipeline gets configured. This is important. And the stop async method is invoked or called whenever a graceful shutdown of the application uh, kicks in. So in that case, we can do all the necessary stuff here. 
Now, the other thing that we could do, or and actually is also advised to do, is also use the iDisposable interface in such hosted services, because when this type of things happen, then we want to also specify exactly what we want to do here, or what we want to dispose, uh, to use uh, finalizers if, if needed, and, and things like that. Now, here in our case, we will just use this uh, timer and the dot dispose method, and we'll dispose the timer. So this is what we'll do in the dispose method. But uh, if you have other things that you would have to dispose here, then uh, this is the place where you should do that. Now, the idea is once again, this method is called before the, uh, the request pipeline is actually configured. And this one is actually called or invoked whenever uh, a graceful shutdown kicks in for the application. Now, this means that when the application starts up and before the request pipeline is configured, we set up this new timer that will actually execute for the first time right when it is set up. And then uh, it will execute, in our case, we configured it to execute every one minute. And then it starts to count. When it's ready, it counts. And after one minute, after one minute it executes again. And the host is responsible for executing this task uh, um, again and again and again until uh, stop async maybe is is called due to a graceful shutdown okay so this is how uh, this i hosted interface is supposed to work now when we go to the startup to add the service because of course we have to add it uh, is for sure we have this services add hosted service and uh, of course this is also a generic method so we can provide what type of service this is and in our case this is the current weather service now of course you can provide here an interface and an implementation if you want but for background tasks that are merely uh, background jobs that are executed in this case uh on timed intervals uh i'm this might not necessarily be uh, useful every time, but if you want, you can even use it uh, with the interface. Now, uh, with this, actually, we have configured uh, this uh, this entire uh, uh, current service, so we can run the application again. And uh, let's let's wait for the browser window to open. Let's bring it over. So remember, we have this background service that actually uh kicks in and it works on the current forecast which we can retrieve via this endpoint so we if we execute uh we see here okay that uh okay things are are not uh, are, are not going well because the service is not configured correctly somehow but the idea is that um here we have zero zero and then a string which is not okay but when we execute Again, I would expect in one minute that this should actually increase the count here. Yeah, so maybe uh, one minute it is not passed, or maybe we have let let's you know what let let's look into this service. Why is this not working? Uh, okay, so what do we have here? So we have here the forecast. And here in this forecast, we um, create this, and this actually no, it works. But then we have the current weather, and then we have forecast dot first, and this should retrieve the first one from here. So I guess something is not is not quite correct here, but I'm I'm not sure why it actually should work. Uh, so sorry for that, but. I guess still uh, the idea remains the the whole concept of running a background service is exactly like this. So the service gets triggered, and in fact, we'll uh, here we have some some correcting, uh, but then here we just uh, we just don't have the the things that we need. So maybe we are just and also don't have errors. Okay, let's then implement the second service and we'll implement that on the forecast so in this case let's add a new service and here let's call it um let's call it general forecast update service 
And here this service has said we want to implement it as a background worker, but uh, in a different way. So in this case, what we want to do is just simply implement the background uh, background service class. Of course, this should also be in Microsoft extensions hosting and everything should be fine here it's the same thing as in the current service we would need exactly the same uh or at least we would need this one we don't need a timer and we'll see exactly why uh so let's uh, go here and um yeah just use this field uh high weather forecast we need to import using for that and then we can create the constructor and in the constructor, we can use the iWeather forecast service. And then we can just assign it. Okay, good. Now, um, this is done right now. Now, of course, if we take a look here, we see that, uh, okay, we don't actually uh, implement the abstract class and we need to do that. So let's implement it. And in fact, we see that in this case, we just have only one single method here. And this is execute async. And uh, this is actually the method that will be executed each time that we actually need. Now, the only thing, of course, that we would also need it is a method that's actually the work that we want uh, to do. So in this case, we have this uh, this one here, and it would be, uh, I guess, a forecast service. Uh, but no, no, sorry for that. This is something else. Um, sorry for that. So in this case, we just uh, it should be like this. So for each forecast in a uh, forecast, uh, then we just want to increase the temperature uh, by one degrees. And uh, that should that's actually the work that we need to do. Now, in this execute async method, it's exactly uh, we need to implement exactly what we have implemented also uh, in uh, the start async method here. So we provide the update forecast, then uh, we have this time span from zero, uh, then uh, we specify how often or in which interval this background service should actually uh, run. And the idea is that this background service class does nothing else than implement itself the iHosted services interface. And it exposes to us only one simple method, uh, which is called execute async. And in that method, in, in our case, we want to use a timed background job. We can just specify, okay, we want simply to use, uh, to, to, to create this timer, to run this method and then uh, specify when it should be run for the first time and how often uh, or in which time intervals it should be run. So that's actually exactly the same thing, only that it abstracts away some of the complexities that we had previously, because previously we had to think about uh, this, for instance, um, the, the start async method, the stop async method, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, then also the dispose thing. Now, the background service does everything actually by itself. However, even if it does so, you still might need to dispose your own objects or your own unmanaged resources. So please don't think that, okay, if this class already implements actually that interface, I don't have to implement iDisposable anymore. Uh, implementing iDisposable will be or, or is always useful, of course, when we're using unmanaged resources and especially when we are uh, in the context of a background task or a background job uh, that might be very, very useful to take care about. So don't forget about that. But all the other things are, as said, abstracted away. So if we are in a scenario, for instance, where we actually want uh, to, to tweak and be more specific about what should happen when uh, when the background service starts or when, yeah when the start async method is called what happens when the stop uh, when the stop async method is called and things like that then we should of course use and implement the i hosted service interface and use our background service like this if instead we just have a very simple task like for instance we have in our case right now we can just use this generic background service class which already implements the interface 
and we just have to provide in the execute uh, async method exactly what we need to to execute and then uh, that should be fine and this is the forecast update service we should also of course add it here in uh, services uh, add posted service it's exactly the same like we did uh, previously but in this case we want to add this forecast update service okay and the iWeather forecast service we have added it as singleton because i wanted it to be easy to to play around with it but we have a total different video in which we go in depth about lifetimes for services in asp.net core so once again you will find the, the link to the to that specific video in the description and probably on a card here somewhere on the screen so if you are interested to find out more about lifetimes and what potential problems you could run into uh due to misunderstanding service lifetimes in asp.net core then please uh, feel free to go to that other video and take a look there okay so now we have also added this one let me just look once again in the configuration now you know let's um from uh, seconds and let's make it 30 seconds this one okay so we have it like 30 seconds now let's run the application again and right now i would expect that uh all the forecasts will then grow the temperature here so we have this weather forecast uh, we try it out, we execute it, so we have this kind of work, work right? So is the temperature, which is in the, this case 29, and here uh, 24, and so on and so forth. So I would expect that in around uh, 30 seconds, let me try also again this one. So I would expect that in around 30 seconds, uh, everything should be out updated. So now we have also this one. But if we, so if this is 29, but we can see already in this other endpoint that we have uh, used that that's maybe already updated. So it's still uh, it's 25, it was 24 previously. So we have here also another value. So this is 30, this is 25. So this was updated correctly. Now, uh, Let's maybe also try the other one, but I guess it's oh, here in this case, yeah. But this runs every 30 seconds, so that's why here the value for this one already arrived at uh, 32. Okay, so let's uh, let's execute this one more time. And in this case, we see that uh, it's still 32, but probably, yeah, now it's 33 already. So we see that our background service is working and it constantly updates here the temperature for all the forecasts each 30 seconds and this is exactly what we wanted to achieve by implementing this type of uh, background service so let's just close the application right now and do a short summary so if you have or if you are your, uh, if you find yourself in scenarios where you need to implement background jobs that run uh, well on a timely manner or in specific time intervals. However, you can also specify cron jobs or, 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 or cron time intervals. You can also use queue triggers for, uh, for background services, but we'll go into more depth maybe in other videos on how to implement other type of background services. But the idea is that uh, the very, very basic setup, if you want to implement such a background service, uh, is basically that you have two options. So the first option is that you implement the iHosted service interface, which actually obliges you to implement the start async and the stop uh, and the stop uh, async methods, and then of course provide also the method that that contains the actual work that that, that you want to perform. Then the second option is to use a base class which is called background service, and in that case, uh, uh, most of the complexity is abstracted away from you. And you just have this execute async method where you have to implement the timer in this case, and of course then provide what should be done in specific uh, or in the specified time intervals. And then in startup, you just have to add uh, to use the 
add hosted services method or add hosted service method, which is of course on the service collection. So it's just services, add hosted service, and then you provide the implementation. Of course, as said, you can go the regular way uh, in which you provide an interface and an implementation for that. Uh, but for now, we just uh, use the uh, implementation. So, and that's basically it. We have seen that the background services are working. Uh, everything seems to be fine. And our data is then updated uh, correspondingly every 30 seconds or every one minute, depending on how we have set up our background service. So that's basically it. It's nothing more to this. As I said, it's not very complicated, but that's actually the proper way to run background services directly in ASP.NET Core applications. Of course, there are also third-party libraries, and actually that's one point that, uh, that we have to discuss, because I think you need to be aware of this. So these uh, hosted services that we register, and we talked about this especially when we talked about the start async method here, uh, when we implemented the iHosted service interface, is that it gets called or invoked by the host before the request processing pipeline is set up. But it is actually tied to a specific host. Now, if you run your application on two or more nodes, this will actually mean that you have actually three or two or three or four or whatever number of applications or application instances that are currently running to service your application. Now, this means that we have two or three or more uh, separate hosts that are created. And this means that for each host using this code, uh, they will call this start async method. And of course, they will also use the stop async method when that specific host shuts down. Now, if you actually need to, I don't know, persist some state about where that service ran and things like that, hosted services might not be uh, the right choice here. Because here you cannot track or all these background services are actually running in the, independently on each of the several nodes uh, that host your applications. So this means that if I would run this on two nodes, the start async method when, uh, will be called on one of the nodes and then on the second node. And they will execute then in regular uh, time intervals of one minute. So I would have basically a background job that executes two times every minute. So as said, in this case, using this regular iHosted service, this is tied to the ASP.NET Core host. And therefore, if you want to use some distributed information and make sure that you don't run the service actually from two different hosts at two different times, so you, have, you need to have a, a warranty that your background job is running actually only once, then you have probably to look elsewhere. And there are some uh, some libraries. I personally have used Hangfire, but uh, some time ago also Quartz, which can do a very good job at, at doing this type of stuff, like keeping also track if a job was ran or not. And that does not depend, uh, or that, that does not depend actually on how many nodes the application runs. So this is one, caveat that you might need to be aware of if you are using hosted services. If your application is then deployed on several nodes, it means that those services that you add here are actually executed each minute or uh, each time interval that you have specified on each of those hosts. And you might have to take this into consideration uh, when you decide how you want to implement your background services. But for very regular and normal and standard tasks, I guess that using this iHosted interface uh, did the job for me a lot of times. And of course, for all the jobs that I needed to keep track of and to make sure that they run only once and not on different nodes and things like that, I have, as said, used other libraries like Hangfire. But yeah, uh, besides this, actually, that's everything or virtually everything that I wanted to talk with you today about. Uh, this idea of background services in ASP.NET Core. So if you did enjoy this video uh, and if you have something to say, whatever uh, feedback or if you have some questions or if you just want to, to tell me something that maybe I, I, I 
I told or I described something wrong or you, you don't agree with me, then just feel free to do it. Use the comments. Don't be shy. I am more than happy to interact with you uh, on a regular basis when I have comments. So or even if you have ideas of topics that you might want to uh, to see here on this Code Wrinkles channel, then also feel free to just uh, leave that as a comment and uh, I would be more than happy to accommodate that if I can, of course. And if you really think that this content is valuable and might be useful, uh, then don't be shy again and share it with your peers, share it in your network uh, through whatever means you want. Uh, it's important that if you think that you have uh, colleagues or friends or whatever that uh, might find this useful, then just uh, spread the word and, uh, and help them with that. And this being said, thank you once again very much for watching. And until the next time, I wish you the very best.